Have you ever wondered if paying a premium to buy steaks at your local butcher is worth it? Well, that's the question that we're here to answer today. We've got two prime graded New York strips. One's from the butcher, the other's from the grocery store. The one from the butcher, it's about twice the price, even though these steaks are the same size, the same cut, and the same level of grading. So we're gonna prepare them both on the grill using the identical method, and then we're gonna bring you back here for a blind side-by-side -side taste test to see if we can tell the difference. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick with us. So let's cover off the two contenders here. We have two prime graded New York strip steaks that are of almost identical thickness and weight. The one from the butcher shop cost us $23.99 a pound, while the one from the grocery store came in at $12.79 a pound. So it's almost half price. But as you can see here, there's really similar marbling between the two cuts. And even when you look at some of the signs of a cheaper steak, like the level of silver skin that exists between the muscle and the fat cap, we really have minimal silver skin on both of these steaks. So with these guys, we're in for a perfect comparison. So now we've got to season these guys up. First, we're just gonna pat them down dry with some paper towel, getting both sides. And now we're going on with a little bit of flaky salt. This flaky salt's from Maldon. It's really nice, large salt crystals. One of our favorite go-to flaky salts. And of course, flip your steak over and with the edges, get any of that salt that's on your cutting board. So with these steaks seasoned up, let's go fire up the grill. So to fire up the grill, we're just gonna get a full basket of lump charcoal. We'll get that ignited. We're gonna be grilling these reverse sear meaning we need to set up the grill for indirect heat first. So we'll get the deflector plates in there and then close down the lid and let it warm up. Open up the vent slightly and we're aiming for an internal temp on the grill here of 225 to 250. One thing I forgot to mention, at the start of this cook before you put your steaks on, as your grill's heated up to 225 to 250, you wanna make sure you get really nice clean blue smoke. You don't want any of that white billowing smoke that white billowing smoke signifies that the creosote in the wool and the charcoal hasn't really burned through. So you wanna let your grill come up to temp and make sure you're getting that clean blue smoke. Otherwise, you might impart a bitter flavor profile onto your steaks. So the grill's up to temp here. And in the meantime, we've had these steaks resting for about 45 minutes. So we're gonna get these onto the grill and then we'll get temp probes into the thickest part of the steak we're gonna to wanna to monitor the temp of these steaks and we're looking for an internal temp of about 110 before we take these off and get this grill ripping hot to sear them off at the end. So this one here is the grocery store steak. This one here is the butcher steak. They look virtually identical at this point. So let's close the lid down and we'll bring you back when we hit our temps. So the steaks have just hit an internal temp of 110. So we're just gonna get these guys off here and inside resting. So now that the steaks are inside resting, we're just gonna get the grill set up for a direct sear. And it'll take probably five to 10 minutes to get this grill ripping hot. We're aiming for a temp of four to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll finish searing off these steaks. So we got the grill up to temp here. It's a ripping 400 degrees hot. Now that we've got the steaks on the grill here, we're just gonna let them sear away for a couple minutes, flipping every now and then until we hit an internal temp, 128 to 130. Steaks just hit the final temp of 128 to 130 here. So we'll take these off. Now it's time for the taste test. And we're not putting any compound butter on these guys now because we really wanna be able to taste the difference between the two steaks. Now, I'm actually really excited to see what the outcome is. And regardless of what the outcome is, I think it's important to ask yourself a couple of questions before you go to the grocery store versus a butcher. Now there's a couple of things you might wanna ask yourself to determine whether you need a butcher in your life regardless of the outcome here. And the first one is whether you know how to pick out a good steak. If you're not familiar with that, you might actually need the extra customer service that a butcher provides to be able to pick out a well-marbled, thick, good, juicy steak for you. Another thing is butchers tend to have larger selections than grocery stores. You know, a great example of that is dry-aged beef. 
You know, our grocery stores certainly don't carry that, but a lot of our local butchers do. So butchers also tend to have fresher meat. They're more connected to the local farming community. And at grocery stores, a lot of the steaks tend to be pre-cut and pre-packaged versus at a butcher, you can actually talk to them, understand where your beef's coming from, and oftentimes they'll actually cut that steak for you on the spot. And so those are just a few benefits. There's obviously other benefits that are more about ethically raised animals and environmentally friendly farming practices that again, go in favor of a butcher, but we're not gonna address that here. That's a whole other video in itself. So let's slice into these steaks. This one here is the butcher shop steak. This one's the grocery store steak. So we're slicing into these steaks here and both of them have a really similar crust. So I don't think there's any difference in terms of how the exterior of these actually look. Really tender as we slice through. Frankly, same with grocery store steak. So looking at the doneness on the two different steaks here, you can see the butcher shop steak is wall to wall medium rare. The grocery store steak has a little bit thicker of a gray band, but on the interior, perfect medium rare doneness. So no complaints here. Both of these cooked up really, really well. Now, there's really only one thing left to do, and that's to go in for a taste test. So I'm gonna pull out two slices of steak here, get those cut up. And now it's time for the blind taste test. So let me go get something to cover up my eyes. So now we're gonna get our blindfold on here, which is really just a toque. And now I'm gonna be handed a steak and I'll try to figure out which one it is. All right, so steak number one. Really tender, nice and juicy. I think I'm gonna have to take a bite of the second steak to be able to tell the difference here. Wow, that's so close. I'm gonna have to do another bite of each of these just to tell. All right, now we're gonna try the second one again. Wow, that is really close. There's a really minimal difference between these two steaks. Both of them super juicy, really tender. I'm gonna guess that the first one was the grocery store steak and the second one was the butcher shop steak. Mixed it up. Really? Yeah. Wow. So my wife told me I just got those two mixed up. So there clearly can't be much of a difference if I'm getting them mixed up. Again, these were both the same cut, same thickness, same grating, but one was half the price. So if you like this video, consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel for more of these steak experiments to come. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate you all being here. And hopefully we're gonna cross the 100,000 subscriber mark this year in 2021.